Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Patchwork Cutters Club. My name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and here we are, the first live for me in the new year. So happy new year to you all. Um, we're going to start in a minute by having a look at some of the cutters that I'm going to be using to paint with this afternoon. So most of you know that if you've watched me before Christmas that cake painting is what I tend to do with the patchwork cutters. So um, a lot of you did do them at Christmas, which was very nice actually. And we've been running lots of, I'm just waiting to make sure the live's going up so I can see it to make sure I'm definitely live. I've got my laptop next to me. There I am. Perfect. Um, so yes, we're going to be doing some painting today. Lots of you did um, do lots of painting over Christmas. There was a lot of people painting the snowman and the reindeer and all these other lovely patchwork cutters that you all did on your Christmas cake. So Christmas is now gone. It is a distant memory and we're going to move on now into the next section of the patchwork cutters and we're going to start looking at spring. So we're not quite there yet, but then we're never quite there with Christmas. So it's like getting ahead of yourself here, really. So we're going to be looking today at the spring set. So I'm going to run through that with you now and so you can see exactly what is in that set. So I'll just move everything out of the way. Just bear in mind this is my first live and of course I've forgotten to switch my light on. There we go. <laughs> now I can, I can see what I'm doing now. Right, okay, let's get this started. So what does spring set look like? That's a very good question, isn't it? So this is spring set. Let me get all the little bits out with it. So there is, um, now I did read Marion's description earlier. I had to Google some of this because I didn't know what some of it was. <laughs> My flower skills very limited here. So that's the tulip. We've also got a lily. Now I really liked this. So I have actually used that today. It's like a little mini lily. Uh, we've got some, now what were these called? Narcissi, which I just thought was like small daffodil to be perfectly honest, which I think they pretty much are. So there's two of those in two different directions. Um, that's the daffodil itself which I'm not going to use today even though that one is sort of blatantly obvious spring um, I've actually got a slightly different route today um, this one I kind of took to be a little bit bluebell-esque has she got that down as bluebell no <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but Mary and I, I've taken it to being bluebell, sort of, anyway. It's uh, We're lending itself to a bit of artistic interpretation here, of course. Um, some leaves here, which will be for um, the daffodils. And then some slightly wider ones there, which will be for the tulips. Um, and that one there, I would imagine, will be for some of the smaller stuff. Now, Marion's cut hers out, so it's slightly different to me. Now, this one, um, Marion has this down as a hydrangea. And I may actually do something else with it. Sorry, I'm off screen a little bit here. I'm out of practice, everybody. There we go. Um, but I've done this again slightly differently. And then there's a very tiny little baby flower there, which, of course, you need to keep track of and keep it in the same bag. Because otherwise, if you're like me, you'll fall foul to losing them everywhere. Because I normally go to look for a specific one and I can't find it. So whatever you do, keep them all in the same bag. That would be a very good idea, wouldn't it? So let's put everything back so I don't lose anything. So I've already made up a plaque. Now I haven't used everything in the kit because um, you don't need to. And I think that's also quite important as well because sometimes when you see a kit, you think, well, I've got to use absolutely everything in here to be able to do my, my picture, whatever it is you're doing. So I haven't used the leaves. I mean, I'll show you in fact the bits I have used and then that'll make a little bit more sense to you. Um, and I've set my cocoa butter up as well. So we'll have a quick look at that. So the camera's down so low, I think literally you will be able <laughs> to touch it. So so these we've got a lot of colors today so this is the cocoa butter painting system that we've got set up here so if you're new to this this is a chrome food warmer with a tea light underneath there's the tea light there and we pop that back on top and that metal paint palette is very hot so in the process of it getting hot the cocoa butter which is here and here is starting to melt or it's actually melted already because I lit it before I went live so cocoa butter starts off in a button form and then when it melts um, it then turns to liquid and then if we keep it at the liquid state when we're painting then we can, um, by using heat, which is obviously what's coming from under here, then we will be able to um, paint. So we've got a mixture of colours on here today. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be using, but I just put a load out. So we've got all sugar flare. Uh, we've got white, egg yellow, primrose, uh, spring green, moss green, blush pink, brown, black, petal blue and grape violet. Gosh, that was good. I remembered all of that. So those are the colours that we've got on there today. So plaque wise, I have got this done for you. I've put this on, put the two side by side so you can see. So what I've done is I've used the lily. So there's the lily there. So all you're going to do if you want to make yourself up a little plaque is you're just going to roll out some sugar paste. You're going to take hold of these embossers 
which Marion uses a lot to cut out, but I use to emboss. So here's this one. Let's turn it around the right way, that way. And I've just literally popped it on there like so, pressed it down while the sugar paste is still soft and then taken it out and there's my pattern on there. So I did this yesterday. So this is actually quite hard to do. It's um, hard as in like it, it means I, if I lean on it, it won't mark it. So if you can do a few of these in advance, it will help you because then you can just do them as and when. So I kind of built a little bit of a picture here. So I'll try and replicate what I've done. So one of these is in here and then I use the other one to go this way whoops I'm throwing it around now that one fits in there so I made a bit of a jigsaw puzzle really this little one here I've just sort of put in several different places obviously because it's painting they don't overlap that's the only difference with this so if you wanted to make any that overlap you're probably best to cut them out you see that one fits in down the end there which I started there so you can kind of see how I've put this together but what I tend to do is roll out a bit of sugar paste this is about my fourth or fifth attempt and what I do is just have a little look at it and go hmm where can I put things and I stamp them all out and look at it and then try and slot them in together and see what we can get so that to me looks a very nice um topper for a cake it is actually on green I'm not entirely sure it's showing up that well on camera it's looking a bit white but it is actually green um like a pale green color so nothing complicated there and we're just going to start painting and we'll get that done so I've got some paint brushes here we have these on our website all the patchwork cutters as well are also available on my website so we will it was up at the beginning but I'll mention it again at the end so we've got here today paintbrush number one paintbrush number two number three and a double zip zero um, the only reason we're missing the zero is because i can't find it i'm sure it's here somewhere but anyway i haven't got the zero here at the moment but we, if we need it we'll find it and then a little bit of kitchen roll just to kind of um to clean our brushes as we go with the cocoa butter so that's all you're going to need in order to be able to do this so it's nice and straightforward okay Let's have a little look at it. So I wish you could see it being less green, actually. It's looking very white on screen, but it's definitely less. Oh, no, it's a little bit, not too bad when I look at it again. Right, let's start. So we're going to use paintbrush. What should we use? Let's use paintbrush two to start with, because we're going to do the lily, because that's the biggest thing on here. Now, I decided... Uh, Kelly's not here, so I can do what I want now. Um, <laughs> Kelly always telling me off for doing pink, but guess what we're going to do? We're going to do pale pink. So we'll, we'll, we'll do pink but very pale so we've got a little bit of blush pink here and we're going to grab some white and we're going to mix that in until we get a pale pink color so I'm just dipping my brush into the cocoa butter into the dusting colors and mixing up a paint well away from the colors themselves so you don't end up incorporating um, you know mixing all the white together we don't want to do that so that looks like an okay colour. Let's start pale shall we so we will paint there's the lily there so we'll paint that in start with so I've gone for a um, coloured background because um, I always think everything stands out much better on a coloured background and today I decided to go for like a green colour rather than going for blue I don't know why but I did uh, <laughs> it's also extremely cold in here at the moment so every time I take my paintbrush and my cocoa butter away from the metal paint palette it is setting very very quickly so I'm going to have to do this in shorter bursts than my usual sort of slightly longer attempts at painting purely because of this reason more than anything else so when it's very very cold you can imagine the minute you take your brush away from the heat it's the cocoa butter's going to set and boy is it cold at the moment so let's get all of this bit painted let's turn it around as well you don't have to struggle and try and paint against yourself you can always turn it around make life a little bit easier for yourself but you can see I'm going back to my palette maybe more than usual I'm just painting over the centre bits there because I can go over those later. I'm not too worried about those. I'll come back to those later on. I did wonder today actually how cold it was going to be. I know I did one paint in here at Christmas where it was absolutely freezing. I don't think we're far off that at the moment. So um, we'll see how it goes. As long as we get some paint down, that's okay, isn't it? There we go. Cocoa Potter doesn't set in hot weathers and it sets too quickly in cold weathers. So that's not helpful for me. So extreme winter and extreme summer. Right, um, let's turn that around. I'm going to just take hold of a little bit more white. Just put some more white into there. And I'm just going to do these buds at the top, which actually belong to that same lily. Because I've done it from the same set, I already know 
that it belongs in there. So I've made a note when I was putting it on there. Don't forget the buds at the top. So I've actually written some notes today because my brain hasn't fully engaged yet from, from coming back from Christmas. So I thought I'd better write some stuff down before I go live. So I'll probably end up forgetting it all. There we go. Right. Okay. So that's a good start, isn't it? That's a nice central spring-like colour. I was trying to go for something kind of bright and colourful today. So lots of different colours today. We're going to get rid of paintbrush too now because it's quite big and um, I prefer to use something maybe a little bit smaller. Plus the fact obviously it is very cold in here. So that's... Um, going to just hinder me. I'm just making sure I've got no colours in my brush, which I don't think I have because I did wash them out. There we go. All right. So um, what other obvious things have we got here? So we've obviously got the daffodil. We've got some green leaves here and we've got some sort of blue belly thing going over here, which I think she's called something else. <laughs> it's very artistically interpreting today. <laughs> Please don't laugh. Um, yes, um, we're making this up as we go along. So let's go around here. Now, the idea with these ones here is I was going to do them yellow and then I was going to do the middle bits orange because I quite like that type of daffodil. So we'll go down that line. So let's go for the yellow first. So a little bit of primrose here. Let's turn that round. A little bit of primrose, grab some white. And you can see the colour change there is quite dramatic. It really changes it very quickly. So let's get a bit of white in there. A bit more white. I want it to be nice and pale. A bit more white. Even more white. We'll get there in a minute. There we go. That's not too bad. Let's try that and see what we get. So we'll pop that on there. Like so. I think this will look very subtle against this green background. I'm sure I've picked the right colour, but I'm not doubting myself here. <laughs> so we'll just go pale to start with and see how we get on. There we go. So Marion's got lots and lots of different floral ones. Now I have painted quite a few of them before. I've had painted the lily in the past, which is on my YouTube channel. Um, I have also painted one called Entwined Roses, which I did a full cake project on. And all of these um, are on my YouTube channel. The only one that isn't is the Snowdrop, and that's part of one of my classes, one of my online classes. Um, we did a whole project on that. I think it's here. I've got it around somewhere, so I'll be able to show you that one shortly. Let's do both of these the same. So we'll do another batch of yellow here. There we go. A bit more. So they don't take that long to, to do. And I think actually this would make a really nice top. If you can imagine this in a corner of a cake and then happy birthday written here, I think that's really nice. And this actually you could do for any time of the year. You can change your colours. So if you fancy doing some different colours, you can. I know it's daffodil and I know it's got the word springtime on it, but um, there's you can change things um, into interpret it however you want. So, you know, or maybe just leave the daffodil out and just do the lilies. In that case, you could just do lots of these other little flowers that are around. So just kind of take it as it comes you know and just do your own thing so i'm not going to change my brush i'm just going to leave that yellow on there and i'm going to grab some of this egg yellow color which is actually yellow with a bit of orange in it and that will do for the center of our um flowers here so i'm just gonna dab over the top of this like so i'm dabbing because it's there's quite a lot of detail in there so i just want to make sure i get all the color into the detail rather than just sort of painting it flat like so let's push that in there we go and then we'll just leave that to dry so that's looking really nice already isn't it look it's picking up really nice so let's again change our color so we'll dip that into the cocoa butter and we'll just dip it in there and give it a twist so we just clean the color out of our brush it's just saves having to run to the sink every five minutes so i just find it's a bit quicker Right, okay, what should we do next? So I had visions that I was going to do these as pansies, I know, and yeah, it's not listed as a pansy, but I thought I could see it as a pansy. So I kind of have this idea that I might try that. So perhaps we'll run with that and see how we go. So let's turn this around. Now we've got two colours here, grape violet and petal blue. Now petal blue on its own is very nice. Grape violet on its own, not so nice. A little bit muddy in colour. Looks great when it comes out as a powder and then you go to mix it and it's a bit dull. 
So if we just grab some of the grape violet to start with and then grab some of the petal blue, that does improve the colour dramatically. I don't know why, but it does. And then we'll grab some white and we'll put that in. And you'll get a much nicer lilac-y colour than just using grape violet on its own, which I don't know, is just not quite right somehow. Something not right with that one. So a little bit more. I'm gonna actually make that a little bit more lilac -y than I've got currently. There you go. Okay, it's not too bad. And then what we'll do is, let's see how dark it is. Yeah, it's quite dark. Let's go lighter. Let's put some more white in there. Amazing how much darker it is when you actually go to put it on your plaque and then you think, oh, actually that is quite a bit darker. Let's go lighter. That's better. So we'll just paint straight over what I did a minute ago. And all I'm just going to do, I'm just going to paint around the outside edge of this. Just drag the colour in a little bit. I'm making this up now, please. So this is not... Um, I'm sure they weren't meant to be painted like this, but I saw it and thought, you know what, I reckon that would work, so I'm going to give it a go. But I think these are meant to be the hydrangea part, but I think they would actually work as pansies as well. So, and then I'm going to go around the outside edge of the larger one here. There's like a larger petal, and I'm just going to leave a gap. And I'm going to infill that with a bit of yellow in a minute, so I'll just leave that as is. Okay. Little pansy. I do like pansies actually, I think they are really sweet. Okay, let's try the one next to it as well. So the one next to it I've got turned this way. I think at that point I hadn't actually worked out what I was going to do with them. Now I have. <laughs> it's okay, it doesn't matter. So we'll again, we'll just infill the larger, uh, sorry, the smaller petals, not the larger ones. And then we'll leave that larger one at the bottom with a gap like I've done with that one there. Can you see that? Yes, you can, just about. So let's turn that round. And what we'll do is we'll go round here. Like so. And just leave that gap for the moment. It might work, it might not. I don't know, I'm hedging my bets here a little bit. I'm pretty certain it will. So we'll run with it. There we go. And there's one more which I've done over there. So let's go up to that one. Get some more cocoa butter going. And down here. It's setting on my brush today. I can literally, by the time I've gone back to pick up more, it's it's solidifying. There we go. Turn that around. So I was trying to do a mix of colours today, so I didn't particularly want to just go all pink or, or all whatever colours. So you can see we're getting a bit of a sort of splash of colour going across the whole thing. And we'll come round there like that. Again, we'll leave another gap. And we'll come back and paint that over in a second. We'll give it a minute or two for that lilac colour to dry, although I don't, I think it's probably dry already. Um, but we can come back to that. So we'll kind of leave those like that, okay? Right, let's clean our brush and let's have a look at what should we do next. Oh, quizzes everybody. <laughs> let's do, we'll do these little ones here. Now these are the blue forget-me-nots. I'd love these, absolutely love these. So we're going to go petal blue on its own with some white. So no lilac in this at all. We're just going to go full blue but lots of, lots of white in it so it's not too strong. Very pale. Maybe a tiny bit of, a tiny weeny bit of grape violet just so it doesn't look quite so fake in colour. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that's okay. I don't want it to be too close to the other one, you see. That's why I don't really want to pile in loads of grape violet. Oh, we'll go blue anyway, why not? There we go. So I'm just going to dab that in. Could have done more of these, I guess, um, if I wanted to. Sort of spread the colour around the whole thing. But I didn't. I just decided to do some little ones here. They're just quite nice accent colours, I think. Cause it kind of spreads the colour throughout the whole thing, doesn't it? You've got a bit of blue at the bottom, a little bit of blue at the top. 
There we go, just dab it in. The brush I'm using is Paintbrush One, which is actually a tiny bit too big maybe for this. It probably should be a zero. I'm just about managing it. Okay. And then little one up there. So yeah, anything that's labelled spring, ignore that because you can use this any time of the year. Don't take any notes of that. Just if you want to get it out now, get it out now. It is nearly spring anyway, but you know what I'm saying. You don't have to just restrict these to whenever it says that they are. Okay, there we go. So that's not looking too bad. Let's clean the brush up again. So I have got moss green is the colour of choice today. So that's this colour here. There's moss green, that's this one. Um, we're going to again pick up some moss green, a little bit white. Just make sure it's not too harsh. We don't want it to be too dark. Put that in there. A bit more. Oh, stop it moving around. There we go. Right, let's start with the leaves. So we'll pop these leaves in first. So this is the first layer of paint. Just remember that the sort of magic part comes when you start doing all the shading. I'm filming at the moment and oh, I just, I'm never keen on that first hour of filming because I just want to skip to the good bit where I know it's going to get really good. And even I sit there doubting myself going, oh, oh no, is this going to work? And then it, oh, it always does, but it's just a horrible feeling when you're doing it at the start. You think, oh God. So it's a matter of just going through this kind of stage where it's maybe not quite right, but it will get there. I picked up a load of colour there. Right, I'm going to switch brushes now because that brush is getting too big. We're going where we're going. We'll go down to zero, zero. That's much better. You can get right into those little gaps then. That saves me having to mess it all up. So yeah, you can see I'm changing brushes all the time. That's really important. You just need a set of brushes, five decent brushes. You don't need them for anything else. Just keep them for your painting and then they will last and last and last. You'll find the paint brushes we sell, they are literally indestructible. Um, you're more like to, I'm more likely to lose them than I will anything else. So if you do um, want to get yourself some brushes, then we've got sets of five on the website. And they're brilliant for doing this kind of painting. Right, nearly there. I've got a few more leaves up here, look. So we'll do those. Right to the top, a bit more cocoa butter. If you ever find the paint's getting difficult to put down, you've probably not got enough actual sort of cocoa butter on there, enough kind of liquid to lift what you're doing. So just have another go. Have some more cocoa butter in there. Now, I couldn't actually work out the top bits. I'm pretty certain these may be leaves or they may be buds, but I'm going to do leaves anyway. I'm sure they may be buds, but I thought a combination actually might be OK. I was all right with that, so I'm sure Marion will be. Right, down here we've got a central stem, which I have got the right brush to use for this, which is the zero. Because you're then going to very carefully just put the brush into the stem gap and just move it down like so okay that's the only way to do this is using that thin brush i can hear a lorry driver coming backwards up my drive now so potentially that might be delivery for me now of course it is right in the middle of a live right okay let's carry on for the moment so we've got this area over here in fact while we've still got the green on here let's do these leaves as well we'll do them in the same color we can always adjust them later on if we need to spring green is quite a nice color for using as well if you wanted to perhaps do a more of a limey green type leaf color let's go across here and do that we've got some sort of bells here maybe we'll do those as like very very pale white or we could do white or blue we'll work that out in a minute um there's another one. Oh, nearly there okay right and the back of there 
those well. Back over there, just a bit. Okay, there we go. So we've nearly painted the whole thing now. We're getting there. We are working our way through this slowly. Right, I am going to do white on here, like white for the moment while I have a think about this. I'm just going to put these down as white for the second while I just think what I want to do with those. I just want to see what they look like white, really. I think the first time in the history of me ever having a delivery, they've actually read the notice on the door that says, don't knock. <laughs> Normally, no one takes a blind bit of notice of anything I write on my door. But clearly, they have today, which is very good. I'm pleased about that. See, they're quite nice, aren't they? Let's turn that back round because I forgot to do the stem. So we'll do the stem. Like that. Right, okay, so we've got the whole thing painted almost, apart from the little pansy bits, and then we'll now start um, improving things, shall we? Let's do that. So let's tell where should we start? Let's start with the yellow. So we've got this bit of yellow here that we've got here. Let's put that in the pansies that I've invented that aren't, but I are now. So we'll put some little bits of yellow in there. And just take that up a little bit. See, that works. I'm quite pleased with that. Brilliant. Hydrangeas that have turned into pansies. Look at that. Magic. The thing is with me, I never read the labels. This is the problem. So I just take these things, I start pressing them in sugar paste and go, oh yeah, look at that. looks like a pansy. I didn't even check to see what it was. It definitely wasn't. It was meant to be a hydrangea. But I think that's a very passable um, pansy. But we'll put, come back and put some um, more painting on that later on so that we get a bit more of an effect there right let's go back to let's go back to the lily and let's make that a little bit darker in places so we'll go back to our color we've got paintbrush two we'll bring that one back in again um, we'll just grab some of the pink but we'll make it a little bit darker now only a little bit so i've literally just taken that brush put it into the color and then what we'll do is we'll We'll just go towards the centre here and just bring that out along the edges. Where's my other brush? Is this one? That paintbrush three? Yeah, we'll just make sure that's spreading it so it's not got any lines going on anywhere. A little bit darker under there, maybe. A bit towards the middle. up here and put round the back of these okay see that makes looks quite nice so not helped by the fact everything's drying very very quickly but we're getting the general idea have a look at that on screen and see what that looks like to you. I always sound like I'm amazed myself. <laughs> right, let's put a little bit of pink down there as well. Okay. All right. A bit of colouring going on on the lily. Right, what should we go back to now? Let's go back to the green. So we'll go back to paintbrush one, which actually does have green on it, so we don't need to do anything with that. All we need to do is just get a bit stronger green. So we'll just add in a bit of, a bit more moss. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of go underneath these leaves with a darker colour. Same colour, but darker, so a little bit stronger. Let's white it. And up here. across there 
There we go, that's better. Add along here. And there's a little bit of leaf under there, so we need to kind of catch hold of that. Alright. I'm not sure what's going on up here. Let me have a little look. Oh, that's because I need a smaller brush. Let's go in with a smaller brush. There we go, that's better. So you don't have to do much for it to change it really. It's quite surprising how little you need to do to make this look more realistic. All about the shading. There we go. That's coming out all right, isn't it? Um, right, we're going to... What am I going to do now? I was going to do something with that white. Oh yeah, I was going to get some spring green. Let's get some spring green going. So this is spring green. So spring green is a limey green colour, so we're just going to add that in, like so. So you often find lime green in the centre of flowers, you'd be amazed how many flowers have actually got lime green in the middle of them. So we'll just put a little bit of lime green in the centre of that lily, like so go doesn't need to be much now you could paint the stalks lime green as well i'm not entirely sure whether or not that will work but let's try let's see what we can do we're on our zero brush so it should be okay or zero zero so we'll see if we can get those to go green and then we can paint those little um things there brown in a second okay that looks all right and then i kind of had this idea maybe to do these a little bit sort of on the limey green color side at the bottom so perhaps we'll bring that in as well. I think I've invented my own flower here, but I'm quite happy with it. So that's okay. All right. And then, what should we do now? Let's do the blue ones. Let's go back to the blue ones. So with the forget-me-nots, I'm just going to take a little bit more of the petal blue. Mix it in with our original colour. And then we'll just clip a couple of corners with these, just so they're not flat in colour. That make them stand out. So we'll just go like that. Okay. We'll give them a white centre in a minute. I'm just looking to see if I've got my dotting tools. I haven't actually sat down and studied what I've got in here yet this week. I've got one. There must be another one there somewhere. Oh, there's another one. Is that the same size? No, it isn't. Oh, look at that. I'm organised today. Right, let's go in there. So if you do this when it's soft, which you can, if you then thought, oh, I might have an extra flower in here, you can then add another flower. If you've let the sugar paste go hard, then you can't. So just bear that in mind. If you want some extra choices while you're going along, you can do this in soft sugar paste. There's no reason why you can't. It's just you leaning on it more than anything else. It's just to try and help you. Right, what's next? We will do a bit more darker yellow on these daffodils. So let's go around here back to the yellow. I've got paintbrush one. I'm not sure what's got on it. It's got green on it, so let's get rid of that. And we'll just grab some of the primrose and just put it into the pink, oh, sorry, the pink, the yellow we've already got. And then we'll just, just do some bits down the middle here, just towards the centre. That'll do. What's on this brush? What brush is this? Brush two. What have we got on brush three? Nothing. Let's soften it out a bit just so it's not. There we go. So it's just a little bit brighter yellow than we had it earlier. And we'll go back. 
back in there again. nice happy with that right let's now do let's back to our zero zero brush and we'll get some brown going we only need a little bit put a little bit of white in there because if it's just neat brown it'll be too strong so we do need to sort of make it a little bit paler and then we'll do these tiny little um oh, what are they stamens aren't they stamens just inside this lily here they're all marked out for you, so you don't have to work them out. They are there. And obviously you can pick and choose, can't you? If you want to do like an orange lily or a white lily or any lily, really. I like, used to like the stargazers until they came out and then, oh my God, the smell. I could never wonder why I was sneezing so much. It took me years to work it out. So there we are. We'll do that. Right, let's go back to the pansies that I made up and um, we'll go for a little bit of black only a little tiny bit and a little bit of black there we go and then what we'll do is we'll just put some markings on them like they have on the pansies so very very lightly just round the throat bit isn't it like that and again on this side, although I do need a bit more cocoa butter because it's a little bit thick. Okay, we'll just darken that centre up a little bit. That works. Look at that. Marion will take one look at this and go, what on earth has she done this time? <laughs> Tell you what, Marion, I didn't plan it either, to be honest. About two seconds before I went live. Oh, my wonder if I could make these into pansies. Oh, yeah, look at that. There you go. That looks very springy, doesn't it? Very spring-like. Right, what do we do now? There's a good question there. I'm just going to go round the outside edge of this yellow and get it bit more towards the edge because it's not quite there so we can just do that quickly with this brush here I'm just going to just take that one out okay now what we can do let's do some imagine we've got some sort of I don't know baby's breath gypsophilia I'm not quite sure actually that comes out as early as spring but we're going to imagine that it does so I'm just going to clean this brush up and I'm going to mix up some white paint On there. I guess if you had the butterfly set you could put butterfly on there but it is a tiny bit early for spring but remember what I said before with this you can use this any time of year so if you want to put butterfly on it stick a butterfly on it I would okay there we go I've got a bit of paint going so I've been using dotting tools for a while now so these are dotting tools they're mainly used in nail art we've got these on our website and they've got little tiny balls at the end of them but they're very good for making exact round dots and that's why I like them I think they're brilliant for this absolutely brilliant so if we just take a little bit of white on here we can just go round it always softens up everything I think it's fantastic it does very nice snow very nice gypsophilia, very nice spots on bows, anything that's a bit spotty. It really does work really, really well. So if you don't have a set, then get yourself a set because I promise you they are honestly the best, one of the best things ever. And if you do have a set and you've been using them for nail polish, maybe get another set to use for cake. <laughs> Just a little detail there. <laughs> Is that coming out? Is that coming out? Okay, you might be able to see that. Let me have a, I'll pick this up towards the end so you'll be able to have a little look as well if it's becoming difficult to see. You could also do this with blue. So if you fancied doing some smaller flowers, some real little tiny flowers, you could do this with 
um, this contraption as well. So, and also if you wanted to do some, um, if I turn this round, clean that up for a second. Grab some cocoa butter and some blue. So if you wanted to do some little tiny, so I got this round the right way, yes I have. So if you wanted to perhaps, you know, even enhance the ones that you've got close by, you can always just add some little blue specks around that colour. So not everything has to be white. I know what I've forgotten to do now. I've remembered. Okay, and then I'm just going to clean that up because what I should have done, which I forgot to do earlier, is take the dotting tool and if I go into the centre of these flowers, I can then give them a little tiny white spot in the centre just by doing that rather than using a paintbrush. So much easier. You can also use this if you were doing like um, a lily that had spots on it. Or you could also use this to do the spots as well. You just get round spots rather than everything else, which I do think is a much better way than using a paintbrush. Because when you push a paintbrush down, the bristles go like this, which means that they are opening up rather than actually sort of staying. You can, you can hold it very carefully, but it's never going to be the same. You really do need to actually have... Um, something round like a dotting tool so there we are right so that's it that's my first paint of the year da 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 <laughs> so that's a spring flower set let's move the cocoa butter kit out of the way so you can see it so there we go so that's spring flowers um so i've used everything in the spring set with the exception of the large daffodil and although it's described as all sorts of these other things i have managed to convert a few bits and pieces to um pansies and various other things let me pick it up for you and then you'll be able to see it a little bit closer i will be putting a picture up onto facebook shortly so you'll be able to see it there you go you can see the little dots now can't you if i just very slowly turn it it picks it up much better and actually looks a bit greener doesn't it when i've picked it up rather than down there where it's looking a little bit white um you can see all the detail that's on there so it's nice to do a paint with lots of different shading on it. It is quite cold at the moment, so just bear that in mind when you are painting, just to paint quicker. <laughs> That's not helpful, is it? Just paint faster. Um, but it is, yeah, at the moment it's a little bit colder than it normally is, but you can see it's really sweet, isn't it? Now, I will put this up onto my YouTube channel as well, but you'll be able to find this in Featured on the Patchwork Cutter Club, so I will... Um, attach it to featured at the end of this once we finish our lives i have to take photos and do various things so i will do that shortly and then you will be able to see everything there i am i nearly put my hat on then but i thought i better not because um the last one i did or well, last two i had my hat on my head so i will be the minute this camera goes off be putting my hat back on my head because it's very cold um if you do want to buy any of the patchwork cutter things then they are on my website there you go traceyscakes.co.uk there's an entire dedicated section to patchwork cutters you can see just directly behind me this is our snowdrop project so this is part of my online cake school i bring this around carefully there we go turn it around it says hello spring and that's the snowdrop cutter with i combined it with spring i think i can't remember now but anyway this one is a painted tutorial that's on my online cake school so if anybody is already a member of that you can go across and watch it on there if you're not then you're very welcome to join us on our cake school with lots and lots of cake painting and a whole host of other activities going on there at the moment including cupcake bouquets and all sorts of things so if you want to have a look at that another time you're very welcome so i haven't agreed with marion when i'm going to come live again on here but i'm sure it will be sooner rather than later so as soon as i get a date with marion i'm sure she'll put it up on here for those of you that watch me on other places i will be live on saturday at 10 o'clock on let's shop cake live which is my other place otherwise thank you all very much for joining me today for the first live of 2023 i hope you've all had a very happy new year so take care and i will see you all back on patchwork cutter soon and for some more lovely patchwork cutter painting so take care see you all soon bye for now